How's it going everyone, it is Pangino here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate guide on optimizing your Intel graphics for gaming and performance in 2021. This video is going to be going over a plethora of optimizations to be applied to your Intel integrated graphics to provide a major uplift in performance and allow you to get the most out of the graphics chip installed to your PC. You should be seeing a good increase to FPS from following these steps, alongside reductions in input latency or any lag issues you might be experiencing. If you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with the results from this video, please do remember to leave a like as it does help me out tremendously and let me know of your results, questions, queries or suggestions for other content you'd like to see come to the channel in that comment section down below. With all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows and boom! you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. Right, so kicking things off, first of all, before we go ahead and actually apply any of the optimizations with inside of this video, we're quickly going to be setting up an easy system restore point. This will help us test out any settings we've made, alongside allowing you to follow this video completely safely and have the option to revert everything back within a few clicks of a button. Navigate to the bottom left-hand side, click on the Windows button, and type in Create a Restore Point. Navigate over to the Create a Restore Point button, navigate down to your C drive with inside of here, then navigate down to Configure. Navigate up to the top to turn on system protection, set this to about 5% at the bottom, then press apply, then press OK. Highlight and select your C drive once again, this time navigate down to create. Simply name the system restore point something you can easily remember. Then go ahead and press create. It will then notify you that the system restore point has successfully been created. We can then go ahead and press close. We can then go ahead and actually update our Intel integrated graphics drivers themselves. This is another incredibly important step to ensuring that you are getting the best performance possible and fixing any older bugs that might exist in your pre-existing drivers. To follow this step simply navigate inside of the description down below with inside of here you'll be finding the intel graphics driver update utility navigate over to the intel driver and support assistant then click on download now we simply navigate down to open file we can then agree to the license agreement and click install then press accept once the installation has been completed click on launch if there are driver updates available or if you wish to check if there are updates available navigate over to the left hand side to available updates this web page will also give you basic system information for all of the components and operating system installed to your pc like your bio version on your motherboard, the CPU you have installed and the graphics driver itself. If you have any trouble with the automatic update utility you can also navigate down to the manual driver download section in the description down below. With inside of here you simply need to navigate down to the graphics driver which matches both your processor's generation number and the operating system you're running on. So for me seeing that I'm running on a 9th gen Intel chip which is listed here and I'm running on Windows 10 I can simply navigate over to the Intel graphics Windows 10 DCH drivers and click on this hyperlink. With inside of here I can navigate down to the available download section and download the IGFX Windows 10, then click on Download Now. And we can then navigate down to Open File and open up the driver. Go down to Next in the bottom right hand side, select Yes, Next, Next, and the graphics driver will begin to install to your system. During the installation process, do not panic if your monitor starts flickering, sometimes goes to a black screen or turns off altogether for a few moments time. Once this has been done, we can then go ahead and press next once again. This will then bring up the option if you wish to restart this PC. I'd recommend going ahead and selecting yes to this and clicking on finish. We can then go ahead and open up inside of the Intel Command Center. We can then simply search for Intel. With inside of here, we're then going to be looking for the Intel Command Center. But for some of you like me, you may not have the option available to you. You can obtain this easily from the Microsoft Store. To do so, simply navigate to the bottom left hand side, type in Microsoft Space Store. With inside of here, we can go to the top right hand side to search and just simply search for Intel Space Graphics. We can then go ahead and select the Intel Graphics Command Center. With inside of here, we can go over to the right hand side, then click on Install. Once it's been installed, you'll then have the option to be able to launch it. With inside of here, simply scroll all the way down to the bottom of the license. You'll then have the option for Accept. To start off, we're going to be navigating over to the left hand side to the Settings cog down here. I like to start off by unchecking the options for Promotions and notifications. We can then navigate over to the display tab found here underneath home. This is where you'll be able to fine tune your resolution and refresh rate which is set for your monitor. First of all we're going to be going to the resolution tab. Now for me I'm actually running on a 2560 by 1440p monitor so I'm going to go ahead and set this option found here. But for most of you you might be running on something like a 1920 by 1080 monitor so set this resolution to match the monitor which it recommends. Once that's done we can then scroll down to the refresh rate tab. With inside of here this is going to be all refresh rates supported by your monitor at that specific resolution. 
resolution. For the most part, you want to be selecting the highest number available with inside of your panel. For me, that's going to be 60p. Moving on from there, we can then navigate down to scale. This is actually a very interesting option for some of you that might want to set some custom resolutions with inside of some games, then navigate over to the right hand side to the settings menu. With inside of it, by simply adjusting these dials on the left hand side and below the image, you can actually stretch and squeeze the image to fit any way you possibly want it to. And once you're done, simply go ahead and click on exit out. Rotation, we're going to be keeping this on landscape. Unless you wish to set up a portrait monitor, you can do so with inside of here. Text content, I like to have this turned on. And quantization range, I'm actually going to go ahead and select this to default. We can then go up to the color profiles. If you do wish to go with a custom profile, navigate over to the custom button, click this once. You can go ahead and experiment around with the color options and fine tune them to your personal preference. These do not affect FPS performance, but may have an impact on games where you could actually tailor this to your benefit to be able to see enemies easier in FPS games. Once you have finished up fine tuning your display settings, we can then go back and click on the home button. With inside of it, you'll have the games tab and capture tab found here at the top. We're going to be going over to capture. Now for most of you watching this video, you may not have known that this was actually a feature and which you can utilize. For performance sake, my advice to you would be to not use this, but if you are going to use the capture settings, these are the capture settings I would go with. For the sake of this, we're going to be keeping this at 720p. Stream to location, we're going to go ahead and select this to save to disk. With inside of the file location, we're going to go ahead and select browse. Then on the left hand side, we're going to be going to this PC. We're then going to go ahead and select the desktop, then select select folder. Continue to scroll down, then click on advanced settings. We're setting the frame rate to 30 and video bitrate, we can set this to about 5,000 kilobits per second, like so. You can choose to capture the audio if you wish to do so. And I'd keep the audio bitrate set to 128 kilobits for the sake of keeping file sizes small. Now moving on to the games tab. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to be going with the auto detect options. All of the games installed to your PC should then be detected. All of the games with the blue tick next to it will be imported. Once you've selected the games, go ahead to the bottom and and click add to library. You can then go ahead and select the game in which we wish to optimize. With inside of it, go to the right hand side to more options, then click on edit settings. Go down to the custom option. We're gonna start off by going to the anti-aliasing option and setting this to always off. Now for the following settings we're about to change, they're going to be tailored towards providing you with a much smoother and higher FPS experience rather than a visually demanding experience. Anisotropic filtering should also be set to always off. For me individually, seeing when we're looking for higher FPS, I'm gonna be going with always off. If your game does feature some more options with inside of there, and my advice to you would be to lower every single option you can to the lowest available option. Once that's been done, we can then go to the bottom left hand side and click on save. For another quick, easy and effective optimization which we can set with inside of Windows, we can navigate to the bottom left hand side, then type in game space mode and click on game mode settings and ensure that game mode is actually switched to the on position. This is great with inside of the latest updates to Windows 10 in providing you much better gaming performance and lowering latency. Ensuring that your PC is set to the correct power plan with inside of Windows is essential to ensure that you are getting the best performance possible from your PC. Now we get to the bottom left hand side once again, this time typing in power space plan. Be selecting edit power plan, be navigating up to the top to the navigation menu and clicking on power options. Going to be navigating down to show additional plans. Now by default, most of you watching should already be set to balanced, but to ensure that you are getting the best performance possible, I'd either be going with high performance or if it's available, ultimate performance. If you don't see the ultimate performance power plan, we can actually go ahead and simply enable this in Windows very easily and simply. With inside of the description down below, you'll be finding the ultimate performance power plan command, which you can copy and paste. Highlight all the way from the right hand side to the left, right click and select copy. Click on the Windows button, type in CMD, right click on command prompt and ensure that you run this as an administrator and press Control and V on our keyboards to paste in that command, then press enter. Open up the power options menu in which we closed out earlier on, then click on the refresh option. With inside of here, you should then be able to see the ultimate performance power plan in which we enabled earlier on. To select the power plan, it's very simple and easy to do. Never get over to the left hand side of it, select this small icon found here, and you're now successfully running on the brand new power plan. This now brings us on to Razer Cortex. Razer Cortex is a free to use program which is highly recommended for achieving the best performance possible on lower end systems or systems with limited GPU power. As mentioned, this program is completely free and easy to set up and you can uninstall it with a few clicks of a button if you decide this program isn't for you. Once you're on the webpage, navigate down to download now. Once the gaming software opens up, you want to make sure that Razer Cortex has been selected in the top left hand side, then go ahead and press install. The software works by simply disabling background services and other applications which are running in the background whilst you're playing games to free up resources and set your game to a higher priority, resulting in an FPS improvement alongside reducing input latency. Go ahead and select launch, then click on get started. Once you are met with the login page, simply navigate down to continue as guest. For this, I just recommend going ahead and actually clicking on recommended. With inside of here, what we can simply go ahead and do is we can fine tune all of the settings it's going to tweak around. For the 
most part though, I actually would go ahead and just leave everything default and checked. You can also enable the auto boost feature found up here in the top, where the program will automatically open up and boost your games upon the game being launched. You can also set up an in-game FPS counter by using the FPS option at the top. You can boot the game manually or you can boot your game through the Razer library itself. Go ahead and press play on your game. You'll then see that Razer Cortex is now running in the background. If Razer Cortex doesn't automatically apply the boosting profiles to your game, simply go ahead and tab out of the game. In the bottom right hand side, click on your icon tray, you should then be able to see the Razer logo. With inside of here, we'll then go down to Launch Cortex. You'll then see that the Razer Cortex program is now opened up with the game running in the background. You'll then navigate over to the top right hand side to Boost Now, select this, and you'll then see that the Razer Cortex program has now began boosting your system, clearing up RAM and processes running in the background. As you can see here, by simply pressing one button, we've nearly freed up a gigabyte of RAM on this system. Minimize the program, leaving it running in the background. It's recommended to repeat that step for every single game you play in the future for the best performance possible. We can then move on to some quick and easy system maintenance in which you should apply around about once every month or so to stay on top of your system performance. For this we're going to go to the bottom left hand side, click on the windows button, type in percent, T -E -M -P percent, then press enter. We're then going to proceed to highlight and select every single file and folder within side of here, right click, then select delete. For any prompts that do come up, ensure that you check the do this for all current items box, then hit skip. We're then going to repeat that step for every single pop-up that comes up until you're finally left with a few files and folders within side of here. These are the only files and folders Windows was using, everything else we just removed was an excess caching file, dump file, simply taking up resources on your PC and soaking up performance. This now moves us on to arguably the best performance optimization within inside of this entire video. This comes in the form of the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner or ISLC. I pretty much recommend this program in every single one of my performance videos for both games and heavy workloads. Once you've clicked on the profile, scroll all the way down to the bottom to the official download link here. Once you've clicked on that, we can then go ahead and open up the file which downloads. We want to then go ahead and select the three buttons on the right hand side, select desktop, press OK, then hit extract. Simply go ahead and double click on the folder, double click on the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner program. For the first box, ensure this is set to 1024. The second box needs to be set to half of your available system memory. You can see how much system memory you have available at the top of the screen here. Simply half this number, so for me that's going to be 16,000. Then on the right hand side, enable the box for enable custom time resolution, go to wanted time resolution, remove all of the data, then input the value of 0 0.50, then use the delete key in your keyboard to remove all of the other data. Once that's been set, never get down to ISLC polling rate. For slower PCs, go ahead and set this to 1000. For high-end gaming PCs, set this to 500. As you can see here on the left-hand side, our current standby list and system is currently using 8.5 gig of RAM. The moment we go to the bottom right-hand side, press start and purge standby list, that's then going to completely clean that out. It's going to automatically do that in the background whilst the program is open. So before you go ahead and play your favorite games, it's recommended to boot into Razer Cortex, get that up and running and run the boost mode. You'll then go ahead and boot into the intelligent standby list cleaner, enable start, click purge standby list, minimize both programs ensure they're both running then go ahead and boot into your favorite games and that finally leads us on to game optimizations themselves these are incredibly important for achieving the best fps possible on your system i'm going to be showing you a few options with inside of valorant here which will apply for practically every single game in which you play on pc some options may be named differently but i'm going to be showing you a list of things in which you should look out for and tweak to help better your fps inside of every single game you play so as you can see here in the training range of valorant we're getting 64 frames per second after all of the optimizations in this video have been applied. Going ahead and pressing escape will then be entered into the graphics menu. The first thing we're going to be looking for is the display mode or windowed mode of our game. It's recommended to actually go ahead and ensure that every game you're playing is running in full screen mode. Secondly, we can then go ahead and set a resolution for our game. I personally like to actually bump my resolution down and it's recommended for you to do so as well. The lower the resolution you play on, the more the game will load your CPU rather than your GPU, which is definitely something we want to do in this case as we're using our CPU's integrated graphics chip, which is not as powerful as our CPU. So for me, I'm actually going to be bumping my game down to 1680 by 1050. This will be completely personal preference depending on the game you're playing. We can then go ahead and navigate inside of the graphics quality tab. In some games, this may be named differently, but this will be where the bulk of the optimizations or settings are for your game. As you can see here, my in-game settings are not high by any means necessary. Now, assuming that I am trying to load the CPU as much as possible, I'm actually going to be taking our texture quality all the way down to the lowest possible. I'm also going to be turning off my vignette, changing my anisotropic filtering to one times, and actually disabling these two post-processing effects found here for improved clarity and experimental sharpening. Going ahead and applying those settings, then going ahead and pressing escape. As you can now see from setting those few in-game settings, we've actually managed to boost our FPS from 62 all the way up to 154. It's put a lot more of that stress over towards our CPU and taking a lot of vital load off of the GPU, which is now allowing for a much more balanced load in which the system can handle. As you can see here, by simply going ahead and playing the game, I'm getting 155 frames. We're obviously dipping down in some areas, but as you can see, this is a more than playable experience.
experience. Another quick and easy optimization for freeing up some performance with inside of your PC is to actually disable the high precision event timer or HPET on your system. This is very simple and easy to do. We can then navigate to the bottom left hand side once again, click on the Windows button and then type in device space manager. With inside of this, simply open up device manager. We can then navigate down to system devices. Go down to the H section. This is where you should be seeing the high precision event timer found here. We're then going to be right clicking on this, then navigating down to disable device, then select yes. Your high precision event timer should then be turned off with inside of Windows. Now, if you do experience any performance issues or issues loading programs, or things just seem sluggish and slow in your operating system after applying this, come back with inside of the device manager, navigate back over to the high precision event timer and re-enable the device just like so. If you do have issues doing that, make sure that you use the system restart point and that will revert that back manually anyway. So once high precision event timer has then been disabled, we can then go ahead and simply exit out of this menu and continue on. This now moves us on to one of the most important sections in this entire video where we're really going to be jumping into optimizing our PC for the best performance. For this, you are going to have to download the pack which is provided in the description down below. You'll be seeing the Intel pack by Panj with the other links. Simply download the file and place it onto your desktop. You'll then be met with the Intel pack by Panj. Right click on the file, navigate over to 7-zip or WinRAR, you should then see the option for extract here. You'll then be met with a folder on your desktop with an identical name. Going inside of the folder, you'll then be met with the registry optimization fixes folder. Going inside of this folder, we'll be provided with a bunch of different registry optimizations in which we're going to be using. If you do wish to go back to the default files with inside of here, there are all the default files in which you can find with inside of this folder here, where you can re-enable the stock values by simply clicking on these files and it will revert everything back to normal. Before proceeding on with this step, you should have already set up a system restore point. If you haven't, it is definitely recommended to do so before continuing on with this optimization. Starting off with disable DVR1. Double click on this option, select yes, yes and ok. We're then going to repeat that step for DVR2 and we're going to continue that until we've applied all of the registry optimization fixes in here. If you believe that you have a medium to high end gaming PC but you just don't have a GPU installed, you want to go with medium to high end. But if you do have an old or low to medium end system, I'd go ahead with low to medium. You won't damage anything by clicking on the wrong optimization, so for me I'm going to be going with medium to high end, click on your optimization, select yes, ok, apply and ok. And all of the registry optimizations have now been applied. We can actually increase the amount of VRAM the GPU has by simply using one of the provided registry files in the folder provided. Inside of here you'll simply go inside of the VRAM increase folder, with inside of here you'll then be met with a bunch of different RAM boost files. To find out which of these files you want to go with, you want to navigate down to your task bar, right click, open up task manager. With inside of here, navigate over to the performance tab, then go to memory. On the top right hand side, you should then see the amount of system RAM installed to your PC. You'll be using the folder which matches the amount of RAM you have in your task manager. So I'm going to be going with the 32 gigabyte RAM boost, selecting yes, yes and ok. And there you guys have it. That is the ultimate guide to setting up your Intel integrated graphics, helping you achieve the best FPS possible, the lowest level of input latency and the best performance possible in other GPU bound scenarios. If you have enjoyed this video and are happy with your results, please do leave a like as it does help me out tremendously. Please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification. That would be deeply appreciated. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. I've been Panjano and I'll see you in the next one.